Welcome back to the show. Every week on Power of Attorney, we ask you to send your legal questions about the next show's topic through Twitter, Facebook, by email. So let's get to your questions about legal assistance right now. Uh, uh, someone wrote, what if there isn't an SL, well, a Southeast Louisiana Legal Services office in my area? Can I still get help? Well, we, every parish in the state is served by a, a, a civil legal aid program. We serve the 22 parishes in southeast Louisiana through six offices. So one of those offices will be available to you if you live in our 22 parishes. If you live elsewhere in the state, you would go to either Acadiana Legal Services based in Lafayette and Alexandria, or North Louisiana Legal Services based in Shreveport and Monroe, and I think Natchitoches. Okay. And so, um, I guess the uh, the odds are that uh, you are going to live not too far from one of the offices if you live in southeast Louisiana, and if you don't live in southeast Louisiana, uh, you can uh, probably get to an office nearby. Also, you can do a lot of the preliminary uh, steps online. Online or over the phone, particularly in our in our more rural areas, we strongly encourage you know telephone intake and right. telephone advice. Just to save time yeah. for the clients and for us too. Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you take a minute and, and describe what are the tools offered online, or what are the ways that people are able to interact with you guys online? Well, they can. People can do an online application for services where they fill out some basic information about themselves, and then that gets sent to an attorney to review to see whether it's the type of case we can handle. And the this other, is privileged information. In other words, well, we, we we don't try. We don't we, we don't want them putting down privileged information. Right. It's okay. Very it doesn't. Limited you don't information. ask for dirty details. You just right. say, "Give us your contact information and give us a general idea of what, what right. your question is about." And who the other party is generally. We okay. try to and, and what your basic income is. We try to keep it limited because we don't want to get privileged information from somebody that we might not be able to represent. Okay. Okay. Now we also have a very, we have an online website called um, lawhelp.org backslash LA which has a ton of material on common legal issues. Lawhelp.org or www.lawhelp or dot lawhelp.org backslash LA. LA. And, and so there's Louisiana. just a lot of information there for the public to self-educate themselves on the law and find out who handles certain types of cases. Okay. So there's a lot of information guides to how to go, go through court. There's a guide on how to do a family law divorce Wonderful. petition. We'll put that information on our website as well, the mm -hmm. Power of Attorney website, so um, you can get it there, and then you can also be directed to the Southeast Louisiana Legal Services. All right, uh, we have a question here. Um, uh, if I need immigration assistance, uh, can you guys help with that? Generally not, um, under current rules. You, you have to be... Um, Oh, a citizen or a lawful permanent resident or kind of <laughs> amnesty alien <laughs> or somebody who's got their deportation suspended by the attorney general. So most of the problems uh, that arise in immigration, we can't do much about it unless it relates to a, a domestic violence victim. Well, there are alternatives. Yes, the uh, Loyola Law Clinic has an immigration clinic. Yeah, that's right here in Uptown New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, that information will make available on our website if it's not already there. Um, you can get immigration assistance, and, and certainly there are plenty of um, uh, law firms out there that will give you a free consultation and tell you mm -hmm. probably a good thumbnail sketch of what your options are. But the Loyola Law Clinic is an excellent resource for that and, and other things, too. Um, Let's, let's move on. I've got another uh, couple of questions here. I like this question. We're getting ready to do an episode about this in the near future. I can't get debt collectors to stop harassing me. Is there anything I can do? Is this something that would require a lawyer? Well, you can send a, what's called a cease and desist letter to the creditor, and then that limits the number of contacts. And, of course, if you do hire a lawyer, the debt collectors are only supposed to communicate with the lawyer. Okay. Is that something that uh, that uh, an individual can go to Southeast Louisiana Legal Services to help with? You know, we used to do a lot of that work. I don't know if we're in a position to write those letters okay. now, or and I, I'm not sure if we have a sample letter on our lawhelp.org 
org web page, but if we don't, we should. <laughs> okay. Um, right. There's there's something called debt buyer litigation that the public should be aware of. Okay. And this is like this is a large part of what we can now do in our consumer law practice. But there are companies that buy up old debt for pennies on the dollars, and then they file suit or arbitration against the consumer. They, they generally can't prove the agreement or the amount owed. And so if you actually fight them in court, you should win. If it's a, yeah. a third party, it's not their original creditor, it's like, say, Visa sold to somebody, some they company. Th they'll, it's, I think it's a racket. I've seen a lot of mm -hmm. this. In other words, they'll buy debt that under Louisiana law, it's an, it's an open account. You can, you can bring your claim within three years of when the charge was made, typically. Uh, and uh, somebody buys that debt and then they send you a threatening letter saying, you better pay this or else we're going to damage your credit, we're going to institute legal proceedings. And some people panic and they pay the money, even, even if they believe they already paid it before. Uh, and they'll make money that way, but I believe that a lot of times it's a uh, uh, fraudulent practice. I believe these are scumbag companies who are doing this, and we're going to talk about it more in this uh, debt collection show we want to do. Yeah, we actually have lawyers who do a lot of work in this area. If well, you'd I want to talk to them show. before we do our show because, mm -hmm. uh, and another tip of the hat to Dave Ramsey, who uh, who has uh, just somebody I've come across who takes off the gloves when he talks about these credit card companies and others. And even in Louisiana, I've seen them trying to collect 10-year-old traffic ticket fines, and I think that, I don't think that's legal. Uh, that's my opinion, but, um, but anyway, um, let's move on, because we're running really short on time here. I got another question. Um, let's see, I think I might have a medical malpractice claim to Southeast Louisiana Legal Services handle medical malpractice cases. No, we wouldn't handle those cases because they're fee generating and very complicated and involve quite a bit of investment of time and money on the part of a private okay. lawyer. And and you mentioned that earlier in the show. If mm -hmm. it's something that you're going to make a claim and it should generate a fee, that's not something you do. If it's a legal, if it's a legal possible medical malpractice claim, a personal injury claim, there are many lawyers out there who will give you a free consultation about that and just look in the, uh, Google it or look all in the yellow pages and you'll find uh, lawyers, I recommend you go to martindale.com and get somebody who has a high rating AV or BV. All right, uh, what's the focus on the future for Southeast Louisiana Legal Services? Well, we're undergoing strategic planning right now to determine how can we be most effective with reduced resources. Of course, we're also going to try and we're losing like 1.2 million dollars in federal funding, which That's is awful. very drastic. It's going to seriously impact the level of services we can offer and the type of services. Now we obviously hope to come up with a strategic fundraising plan to make up some of that money too, but 1.2 million is a lot to make up. Yeah. Yes, it'll take some time, but um, so we're, we're looking at, you know, we, we, right now we do a lot of what's called extended representation. We actually go to court with a lot of people compared to your average legal aid program in America. And with less funding, can we continue to do that? Um, that's a big issue. Yeah. Or, or do we spend more time on helping people uh, represent themselves in court? Or we spend more time on advice and brief services, more time on community legal education? But it, it's a major cut in in, in uh, the services that we will be able to provide for the next year or so. Is the sequester uh, the reason for that dramatic cut or is that just a, a little piece of it? It's, that's a, actually a small piece of it. The big, bigger piece is this census adjustment, be, mainly because poverty expo population has exploded in many parts of America. So a lot of the federal money for legal aid is getting redistributed to those counties and states. This year, if you didn't have at least a 32 percent increase in your poverty population, your your LSC funding would be cut. That's how bad it is in the rest of the country right now. And We've had an increase in poverty recently, but nothing on the order of 32 percent or 100 percent. 
Like for example, Atlanta Legal Aid now has a poverty population that's double what it was a few years ago. Wow. Their poverty population used to be about the same as ours, but now it's double because I guess the economy's gotten so bad in that part of the, the country. Wow. So well, a lot of the money's being redistributed to other parts of the state because they try to make it fair. Well, um, so when you're faced with these kind of drastic cuts, is there, um, well, what are some of the organizations out there who are trying to uh, soften the blow, try, trying to help you guys uh, stay um, functional and, uh, and... Well, the Louisiana State Bar Foundation's been very helpful. They're, they provide us with a lot of funding. Some of the district courts tack on a $10 filing fee to lawsuits to f help fund our program. And we do get grants from some local governments. Right. We, we don't get anything from, um, and we're just getting this grant from the Attorney General, which is going to help a lot, but it's going to end up redirecting some of our core services into mortgage work, which of course is important work too. Sure. But our major, I guess in terms of our major gaps in fundraising is we really don't get any money from the state legislature anymore, and a lot of states do. And we don't have a large number of private donors. Though from time to time, what has helped us out in recent years is several law firms that have handled class actions have des ended up designating the their leftover funds to us. Wonderful. Yeah, we, we got over $400,000 in those funds in the last two years, and they really helped our financial situation. Right. Well, you mentioned the Louisiana Bar Foundation. Um, I also noticed on your website you have United Way. United Way is one of our funders. We get funding from uh, Baptist Community Ministry Foundation and New Orleans Foundation. And right. Well, we want to just mention them uh, on the air and publicly mm -hmm. recognize them. And we really appreciate their support. Well, I mean, these are people who are looking out for the least of our brothers and sisters, and we want to say thank you to them because uh, without those people helping uh, Southeast Louisiana Legal Services, what would happen to all these uh, uh, unfortunate people stuck in a legal system without legal representation because unlike criminal matters you're not entitled to legal counsel if you cannot afford it in civil cases and so you you, you know the work you're doing is so important a uh, follow-up question um, in the area of um, uh, taxes that you discussed earlier people needing to file bankruptcy in these times are you able to keep that uh, part of your service um, menu operational well our Income tax practice will stay strong. We just got an increase in funding from the Internal Revenue Service, so we have a very strong tax law practice now, and good. it does a lot of good for people. We had a lady recently who, she was taking care of her elderly mom and had to withdraw from her retirement early, and of course to pay her mom's medical expenses, and when she did that, she got a huge tax bill from the IRS. Nice. Because of all the penalties when yeah. you make an early withdrawal. And then well, she finds out she has cancer herself, too. Oh, my goodness. And we were able to go in and do what's called an offer and compromise and substantially reduce her tax debt. And that really you know, helped yeah. her in, in her life situation. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in the tax law area that has a big dollar impact on people. Identity theft is a big problem in the New Orleans to Baton Rouge corridor right now, and there are people that are preying on people, taking their Social Security numbers, filing tax returns under those numbers, getting the refund, and then you, the innocent victim, end up right. holding the bag by having the IRS yeah. come after you to Be pay the refund back. about that, right. So, uh, in fact, uh, tax, uh, <coughs> uh, what do you call it, that... Uh, that ID fraud, uh, it's the fastest growing white collar crime. Everybody be careful with your personal ID information. But we're all out of time. We'll uh, look forward to having you back here and perhaps other uh, attorneys from, from Southeast Louisiana Legal Services to talk further about some of these very important areas that impact so many in our community. We're grateful to you for being here. I want to encourage everyone watching our show to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and send us an email to ask legal questions or tell us how we're doing. And remember to check Check out the website johnredmondpoa.com or jrpoa.com to watch every episode of the show and get more information about everything discussed here. Thanks again for watching and thank you for your questions. We will see you next time.